بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله This is going to be the last topic of chapter 9 However, uh, this topic uh, is, uh, is not the We're not going to talk about the steady state solution in this topic Okay In this topic, we're going to talk briefly about a very uh, interesting phenomena uh, Especially in vibrations Okay uh, for two degree of freedom, uh, the mode shapes and the uh, natural frequencies for two degree of freedom systems. Okay, if you are interested in this topic more, you can take a course in uh, mechanical vibrations where they're going to elaborate more on this topic. So here we're not going to talk about the steady state solution, okay, or the frequency response. We're going to talk about how to find the natural frequencies and mode shapes of two degree of freedoms systems okay mechanical systems we're going to we're going to focus only on one uh, example which is a free vibration no external force okay and we will derive the natural frequency and mode shapes before we start what is the natural frequency and mode shapes natural frequency and mode shapes are the eigenvalues and eigenvectors that you've seen in uh, math in calculus or the differential equation course okay simply derive the um, eigenvalues and eigenvectors these are what we call natural frequencies and mode shapes okay we will uh, talk about it more physically here in this course because this is an engineering course all right this is our system we have two masses okay very simple uh, two degree freedom and uh, connected between them there are springs connected to both both walls okay so we have x1 and x2 these are the equation of motion for x1 and x2 we have two equation of motions we want to derive again the eigenvectors and eigenvalues, which are the natural frequencies and the mode shapes. How to do this? We need initial conditions because this is free vibration. We need initial conditions. So the initial conditions we will use either initial displacement or initial velocity, right? Or both. For simplicity, for this example, we want to talk about very simple example. We will consider only the initial conditions for displacement, x1 and x2. Okay, displacement on mass 1 and mass 2. Now, how are you going to solve this? Either using a substitution method, the classical method, or you can use the systematic method, like in linear algebra, if you took a course in linear algebra. So you solve for x1 and x2, with whichever method you use. Okay. Then you focus on the... Uh, Characteristic equation. Remember what is the characteristic equation? What's the char This is the, the denominator of the solution in the S domain. This is the characteristic equation. If you solve for the roots of the characteristic equation, you will get two roots. Remember what we call them in differential equation, these two roots? We call them the uh, eigenvalues. We call them the eigenvalues. So the eigenvalues are simply your natural frequency. So the smaller number, we will call it natural frequency number one. And smaller or and the larger number we will call it natural frequency number two. Okay. You can see that clearly the natural frequency depending on the stiffness and mass, just like we did in chapter three. Okay. All right. So these are the natural frequencies. What does it mean the natural frequency? We will see next what does it mean the natural frequency. Now we want to solve for the mode shape, or if you recall in math, we call it the eigenvector. Okay. Now if you solve for x1 and x2, it will be depending on what? On the initial conditions, right? So you can see if x1 depends on x uh, and the natural frequency number one and natural frequency number two. Not just one natural frequency, two natural frequencies because we have two degree freedom system. x2, same thing. It will depend on the natural frequency number one and natural frequency number two. Now, how are we going to get the mode shapes? Remember, these A1, A2, the, uh, the, uh, mag the magnitude or the amplitudes of the oscillation or the vibration depends on small A1 and small A2 and the natural frequency, which is not going to change. What is A1 and A2? Do you recall what's A1 and A2? It's the initial conditions. These are the initial conditions. Okay. So how to get the mode shape number one or the eigenvector? If you remember in math, for eigenvector number one, or mode shape number one, we will call it here in vibration, I will assume the first initial condition, A1, equal the second initial condition. Both of them have the same value. So in other words, in other words, I will give X1 like one centimeter to the right, 
an X2 one centimeter to the right and then leave the vibration or the system to uh, vibrate or isolate. What will happen? What, what the solution we will get? Mathematically, this is what you will get. You will get A2, capital A2 and B2 from here, from this solution, capital A2, this one, A2, right? And capital B2, both of them will be zero. A2 and B2 equal. So you will have only A1 and B1. That means the system X1 and X2, both of the magnitude, X, the amplitude, X1 and X2, both of them will vibrate at the same frequency, which is the first natural frequency. In other words, for M1, if you give it one centimeter, M2, also one centimeter, both of them will vibrate in the same direction. In other words, if you give X1, one initial condition to the right, and X2, one initial condition to the right, also one centimeter to the right, both of them will move in the same direction at the same frequency. Both of them will move at the same frequency. And we will call this mode shape number one. So mode shape number one will vibrate at the natural frequency number one. Mode shape number two, or eigenvector number two. I will assume A1 equal to minus A2. A1, if you give, if you, in other words, if you give mass uh, number one, one centimeter to the right, and you give mass number two, one centimeter to the left, what you get your solution? You will get the solution only in terms of natural frequency number two. Both A1 and B1, capital B1, will be equal to zero, this one. B1 and A1 will be equal to zero. And you are left only with this part, which is the second natural frequency. So what does that mean physically? That means if you give X1 one centimeter to the right and X2 one centimeter to the left, this is my initial condition, you will have both of the uh, uh, masses moving a chain against each other. This will move in this direction and at the same time, this will move in this direction with the same magnitude but opposite direction and the same frequency. Frequency will be the same, which is the second natural frequency. All right. We call this the second mode shape, or we call it the uh, second eigenvector in math. Okay, all right. What the last uh, uh, ex uh, uh, case? What if you give arbitrary condition, uh, uh, initial condition? In other words, what if you get a one and a two are not equal, arbitrary and not equal to zero? What will happen to the system? Both of x one and x two will move. Okay in both of the natural frequency, okay? So we will call this mixed mode, okay? So if you give, for example, if you give x1 one centimeter to the right and you give x2 uh, three centimeter to the right or to the left, what will happen to the oscillation? Uh, both of them, uh, x1 will move in a frequency different than omega one and omega uh, two, and X2 will move different frequency, different than omega n and omega 2. Mixed mode, we call it. Okay? Arbitrary mode shape. All right. And this is all the topic of the mode shapes. And this is going to be the conclusion of chapter uh, 9. Thank you very much.